Allah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi Shrahli Sadri wa Yasser Li Amri wa Halulukatha Milathani Yafkahu Koli. Salaam alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, dear brothers and sisters. Welcome to today's program. My name is Sayyid Muhammad, and joining me on today's program, we have Brother Hussein and Brother Hadi. Salaam alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Wa alaikum assalam. Well, guys, today we're going to be talking about um, a very interesting topic, something that's very important. As we know, today is already, um, you know, we're getting right towards the end of 2021. Everything that happened this year, you know, that's right in our rearview mirror. Right now, we're looking towards 2022. And we're looking at, you know, first of all, we're looking at what have we done this year? How productive were we this year? Was this a, in terms of our lives, that, you know, we look at this was one year. Was this a successful year for us, let's say? Um, and obviously, this is a personal question. So, you know, uh, Brother Hussein, Brother Hadi, you know, even myself, I mean, you know, let's say that, um, can we say that this was a productive year for us? Brother Hadi, what do you think? Well, first of all, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Um, in terms of me personally, I don't think we should, yeah, I mean, you could say it was a productive year. Alhamdulillah, it was a productive year. We should always be thankful to Allah for everything that happens in the year, whether it's good or bad. But this year, especially, I feel like, alhamdulillah, it's been a really good year. I've accomplished a lot of things on a spiritual level, and I've accomplished a lot of things on a, just, you know, like hitting those targets, bettering myself every day, getting better at being a practicing Muslim, getting better at fulfilling my wajibat. Obviously, it's a continuous struggle. You're not going to reach, reach, reach perfection like that. So I think it's a slow process, but I feel like I'm on the right track, alhamdulillah. Inshallah, I will stay on this track. Alhamdulillah. And, you know, if I can say, Brother Hadi, also on a physical level, I mean, that beard is, you know, mashallah. Mashallah. Mashallah, yeah. Um, yeah. Um, definitely, you know, yeah. It isn't just, you know, a basic thing that we can say, oh, this is good, this is bad. Um, but when you look at it from that perspective that like we should be really like improving ourselves every single day. Right. Like, you know, like this week, I'm hoping that by next week, I'm, you know, like a, a different person, basically. And I mean that in a good way. Like, I think um, there's sort of this idea that, you know, people say that, like, um, you know, for example, somebody that changes is like a bad thing, like change is like a bad thing for somebody to change but in you know obviously in one way that's a good thing because we want to be changing every single day towards you know getting better and better and better you know close to accomplishing our goals brother yeah, saying to... uh what, what'd you say yeah i was just saying oh uh, yeah i was just saying to add on to that um something i read this year in a book was it was it was a really it was a quote that like i kind of stuck by all year it was become 1% better every day. Just improve yourself 1% every day. And I feel in, if you look at the statistics and like even psychology proves it, small change over a long period of time leads to better results. Even in Islam, they say if you practice something for 40 days, it's solid. You, yeah. you're, you're pretty good at it. That's why there's a lot of things, a lot of rituals that they say, do this for 40 days and you'll achieve whatever you want to achieve spiritually or if you're making other wild to this for 40 days. So the number 40 is really special in Islam. And I feel like even psychology proves this, that doing something over, doing some small changes over a long period of time gives it to better results and bigger results. So inshallah, I was a really big piece of advice to all of us is that we need to change ourselves slowly. You can't just automatically change your life you can't just automatically just oh i'm gonna stop this in from tomorrow you have to take it gradually because if you stop something tomorrow you're it's inevitable that, inevitable that you're gonna start it again so if you take it slowly you slowly kill the your nafs do jihad of your nafs over a slow period of time a long period of time inshallah it, it'll lead to better results just don't rush things that's one big yeah. thing i've learned from this year yeah, alhamdulillah, brother Hadi. There's so many, there's so many good points in what you said. You're literally just, you know, 
drop the mind on us. Um, there's so many, you know, things to to talk about here to um, you know dissect that. But um, brother saying the first, let me just ask brother saying, um, yeah, same question to you about um, do you think this was a productive year? Yes or no? Hurry up, just kidding. Yeah, do you think this was a productive year? Yeah. Uh, honestly, uh, I think yes, because uh, this year spiritually. I got, I mean, as Brother Adi was saying, like, get a little better each day, like a little percent. Uh, those are very wise words, uh, Brother Adi. So, yeah, honestly, I think it is, uh, it was a productive year. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, you know what I thought about, right? Um, like you were saying about doing something little every day. Um, and, you know, one of the things I think of um, is that, you know, like you're saying a little every day. And one of the main things that I saw, like, because every day we're trying to become more productive, right? Um, and what is productivity? Like, I think that a main part of being productive, of, you know, doing more every day is just, yeah, it's just the little things that we do here and there, little things that sort of like, you know, little things that we can do that make us feel more productive, want to work more. And one of those things that I saw personally um, throughout you know, I think a lot this year, especially, was just being organized. I felt that like, you know, like, for example, if, if you have like a dirty desk or something, you know, like if I'm, if I'm like doing some work on my desk, and it's like filled with like old papers, and it's just, it's just disgusting. I don't even know where a pen is, you know, then like, you're not going to feel like working compared to if you have a perfectly clean desk. Um, so like, even in, you know, my house, there's like, um, there's like, you know, like a couple desks together where, you know, I work and it used to be really dirty, but, you know, like this year we basically cleaned that entire area and now it's like, you know, completely spotless and not even like just that area. It's like, basically, um, it's like a whole thing that like, now I'm feeling more productive, even if your house is like a little cleaner than before, or like, even if, you know, like I said, tiny things like my closet, like if I go and clean my closet, I think that like small things like that actually have, um, they do have like a psychological impact on you that it's going to make you feel like more positive. It's going to make you have more energy just by doing, you know, something small like that. Yeah, definitely. And I think it's something that like we all need to practice. If I think a lot of us, we get caught up in the thing, in this like notion that we need to just change overnight. We need to become better Muslims right now. Drastic changes, yeah. And, and that, like, has, like, that has a bad effect on us. It puts, like, this really big strain on us. And when, then whenever we think about becoming better, we think that, oh, we have to just stop doing this. We have to stop doing that. Everything is a gradual process. You can't just wake up one morning and say, all right, I'm a different person now. And that goes with everything in life, not even just religion, even with school, even with your work, even with if you're an athlete and you want to get better at your sport, even – at every aspect of your life, you cannot rush things. Rushing things always, it doesn't lead to, you end up failing or you end up just completely leaving, just completely leaving whatever you want to achieve. And so in sh what I'm trying to say is our goals should be made in such a way that they don't have, we don't set our goals to be, oh, tomorrow I want to be like this. We should set our goals for a farther date set our goals for maybe a month or two months down the road, check in with ourselves, journal. Journaling really helps. I feel like if we continuously journal every day, or not even every day, every week, have a personal check-in with ourselves and see how we're doing spiritually, mentally, physically. And I feel like that can have a really big impact on us. If we just become our own best friend. There's a quote by Imam Ali al-Islam that says, the best of knowledge is the knowledge that of like yourself. Knowing yourself is the best knowledge. And I feel like that's a really deep quote that we need to understand. Knowing yourself. Get to know yourself. And once we get to know ourselves, we can inshallah become better people and better Muslims overall and better Mormons. Yeah. Um, you know, especially since that we look at, you know, like all of the, like you were talking about doing too much at once. Um, that's, you know, definitely a huge problem because, you know, like, I think it was, um, there's a saying from, you know, the Ahlul Bayt um, that said, it's better to, 
avoid doing bad deeds than to do good deeds. And so people think that, you know, you have to just right away in order to, um, you know, in order to get where we want to be, you know, which is, you know, going to heaven, you know, we have to do everything, you know, just like that. You have to, you know, feed a thousand people, you know, all these things. You got to read the Mazda Shub every day or you're not going to heaven. You know, I think that's it. I think that's the level where some people are at, where they yeah. feel that they have to go to such extremes. Otherwise, you know, they're not going to get anything. Um, but, you know, what I saw is that, um, you know, um, I think it was last week, a couple of weeks ago, um, I was in this course um, and we it was about, you know, the afterlife and it was about, um, you know, the stage of the grave, you know, Barzakh. Um, and, you know, what I just learned from that um, was just about, it really made everything so, so simple for me, I think. It really made it really simple, which is, you know, before you look at all the different things, you look at, oh, you know, well, okay, you have to go here and then there's the great, you know, this and that. And there's so many things you have to do this, you have to avoid this, you have to, but when you look at it from the most simple level, um, which is just that, you know, you look at, we have time here. We're given a certain amount of time. We don't know how long that's going to be. Um, and as long as we follow what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us to do, as long as we follow the basic things, you know, okay, read your namaz, do your wajib, stay away from haram, as simple as it is, then we're going to see that result in the next world. It, it doesn't have to be like so, you know, so dramatic, so difficult. Like we have to do this, we have to do that. You have to read this, you have to, you know, it's really so simple that it's basically just do good. It's basically just stay away from bad. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, that's just how I see, you know, he just lays out the blueprint for us. And it's so simple that he's, you know, we can see a way to the future. Like you're thinking, oh, okay, you know, I'm alive. Adi, you're alive. I was saying you're alive. But we can, we can see exactly what's going to happen through the grave. They take you step by step. Okay, these angels are going to question, you know, if you did bad, they're going to question you. These angels are going to do this. They're going to do this. There's going to be a trumpet. People are going to wake up, you know, day judgment. It brings you through, you know, all the different stages. So, and it even says, you know, how to avoid these things, you know? Like, for example, when we die, um, you know, the angel of death, like you think that's one of those things you think like, oh, you know, like what's your idea of the angel of death, you know? Yeah, it's like a scary, like, scary figure. Yeah, like um, you know what the what the guy in, um in the course said was you know he has like a scythe you know, mm. scythe black hoodie you know that's what's in our minds obviously, um and you think of like okay that's gonna happen, but when you look at it that if we just do what we are supposed to do it lays it out perfectly that we just follow what we have to follow we just you know do the things that. The imams and, you know, the prophets laid out for us so easily. You can just get right past that. And so that's, that's how I look at it, is that it's just really, you know, one process. Um, that, you know, the, you just do what you have to do. It's just, you know, get to the next step. Yeah, I mean, I feel like Islam is a really easy religion. And sometimes yeah. it's the Muslims who make it hard, either through, like, cultural values, even, like, living in the West. Living in the West is obviously oh, yeah. it's really it's really hard to stay stay intact with your with your deen. And yeah. it's honestly a big jihad to, to stay in to to follow your deen because of all the all of the vices and all of the distractions that we have here. And you can look at that at both ways. It could be a blessing and a curse. Sometimes when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tests us with different things, it's because he knows that we are capable of it. He never burdens a soul with something it cannot bear. That's it's an ayat of the Quran that he's never going to put so much strain on you that you're not going to be able to bear it. And you're, all, you're inshallah, you're always going to get through everything because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala knows what you're capable of and what your what your weaknesses are and what your capabilities are. So when we get on, we we get these tests put on us. We can't just say okay. Um, we can't just give up right then, right then and there. It's it all comes down to the process. It's a process. Death. We shouldn't be scared of death, and we shouldn't 
neglect this dunya either. A lot of times we we sort of like look at this dunya in a bad way. We're like, oh, we're only here for a little bit. We shouldn't do any good. What's the point of being productive? What's the point of doing? What's the point of being just, happy here? Just sit under a rock. <clears throat> exactly. Life. Sit under your rock, you know, just read Namaz stay, stay, stay tight, stay quiet, you know. Just exactly. On to the next post. So I feel like that that whole like idea of this dunya is very flawed. This dunya is a place. This dunya is a test. This dunya is what's going to bring us to Jannah, inshallah. Our actions in this dunya are going to be reflected on the day of judgment. And if we don't, if we just sit around and wait and say, oh, okay, this dunya is temporary, this dunya is this, this dunya is that. Sometimes people curse the dunya, like dunya is this, dunya is that. It's not that simple. The dunya isn't just, just, just here just for us to walk around and go, go back to Barzakh, go back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. It's a place where we need to sh- prove ourselves to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and prove to him that we are worthy of being in Jannah, the being with the our Ayma alayhi salam, the prophets alayhi salam. And we just, it all comes down to just being a good person, like you said. Brother Hussein, do you have anything to add on to this? Brother Hussein has just been completely, you know, silent. Come on, Brother Hussein, drop some wisdom on us. Uh, I don't really have anything to add on. Come on, brother. I mean, um, yeah, I mean, brother is saying, um, you know, like we were saying about, you know, how people view this world. It's it's all about perspective. Um, and so, like, what do you think, for example, what do you think is, why do you think, um, you know, people's perspective is so different? Like, why do you think some people see it as, you know, so good and other people see it as you know a horrible thing how do you think that they can make it sort of clear for themselves that the difference between you know this right and wrong uh well really i think uh as you were saying perspective i think they see it how they want to see it like if someone even if the world if something's bad if something's going wrong on right uh or if some if someone is doing something and you're not really like saying anything about it or like if this if you have like a friend this is nobody in particular it's just regular so if you have a friend and he's doing something wrong and you just overlook it it's like you know how you see it's bad right but you kind of try and deny the truth right you try and deny it to make it look like oh this is the right thing to do so even as like the um people of the mood right prophet Salah al-islam with the camel Every everything was uh, fine, right? The people uh, they killed the camel, right? But the reason ev- one person killed the camel, right? But everyone knew about it. That's why they all died because no one wanted to say anything, even though it was wrong. They knew it was wrong, but they tried to. Did de- they denied it? That's why they died. Yeah, and to add on to what Brother Hussein is saying, I think we have to find sort of a middle ground in like our perspective with this dunya um the ultimate reality of life of this dunya of this materialistic dunya is death and that's the unavoidable reality that all of us are going to face and i think if we understand that but at the same time we need to understand that it's not for nothing we're not placed in this dunya just to be zombies and just walk around and not have any purpose in life our purpose obviously should be the our purpose, our re- the reason why we were created was to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But along with that, we need to make ourselves the best Muslims, the best humans, at the end of the day, the best humans that we possibly can be. Because that's what it's about. It's about being good. You can read hundreds of rakats of namaz. You can be the best Muslim in terms of like your wajibad. You can be fasting. But at the yeah. same time, if you have no akhlaq, you, you're not a good person. I mean, we see in the world with all these terrorists, they probably pray more than us, to be honest. And, their, but their voices, they, they read Quran beautifully, you know. Yeah, they read Quran beautifully. They, their hafiz of Quran, they read the Quran beautifully. But there's no there's no love in their heart. There's always, there's just hate. We need to make sure there's love in our heart for everyone. We need to make sure there's akhlaq. Because that's the Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he came 
to perfect the akhlaq of mankind. I think it just goes back to his mission. That was his mission. He came to perfect our akhlaq, to perfect our morals, to perfect our ethics with other people. Um, and even you look at, you know, what I think of is that, you know, there's so many, in terms of Muslims, there's so many, you know, Muslims in this world. And I'm, I'm talking about the, the good ones, obviously, you know, forget those, those other guys don't count. Um, but there's so many of us. And yet, you know, we all have basically this, the same book, you know, the same prophet that came down and, like you said, told us about um, manners and ethics. And yet, you know, still we're focusing on the other stuff. You're looking for ways that were different instead of ways that were the same. And I think that that's also a huge thing. The way I see with, um, you know, like Brother Hadi, you were talking about, um, you know, for example, you know, Western, the Western culture, you know, even, you know, American um, Muslims living in America. I think of that um, like the connections that Muslims have with, say, you know, Christians. Um, and what I mean by that is, you know, before, I think it was always like, uh, you know, because obviously our beliefs are, you know, sizably different. Um, you know, we have uh, different things. But I think that in, you know, today's culture, basically, where religion is sort of put towards the side, sort of, you know, a, a secondary instead of the number one thing. I think that that's when we see, like, how similar we really are, that, you know, Whoever it is, even like like I was the Christians, like we have that in common. We have that much in common. Human. That, human. yeah, human, human. That we both, um, you know, we have our beliefs, and it's sort of like you know they're trying to take that away from us. You know, you know, sort of. Um, so that's how I see it, and that's how I even see, you know, for example, the you know all the Muslims fighting is we have a basic thing. We have a basic principle of how we should all live. And that doesn't really change throughout everything. Um, even, you know, all the religions, they, you know, the good ones, uh, they spread something about, you know, being nice to each other, being kind to each other. Um, and I think we need to focus more on that. And we need to look on that because, you know, like you said, that's what it is at the end of the day. We're not going to be um, judged according to how many people we, you know, how many people we exposed, you know. Like, I always see these things on YouTube. It's like, um, you know, whatever. Shia exposes Sunni or Sunni exposes Shia. And it's like, you know, I mean, they're entertaining. Am I right? Am I right? Well, you know. But at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's like, what difference are we making? Are we bringing people, like, even people look in and they see, you know, like, say a Christian, say, you know, an atheist looks in. Are they going to look at us and be like, wow. They're just you know. fighting each other all the time. Yeah, they're not gonna like. How did they? How did people convert to Islam at the time? Prophet Muhammad Sallam. Prophet Muhammad Sallam didn't force anyone to convert to Islam. They saw the way he acted. They were they were like, wow. They were just blown away by this man's kindness, this man's generosity, and you know, they converted to Islam like that. You know, um, yeah, that's what it is, basically. Yeah, I mean, I understand what you're saying, and it's a really good point that sometimes. In our own Muslim community, even with Shias, not even Sunnis and Sunnis, we have yeah. so many divisions within our own Shia community. That how are we supposed to be ready for the Imam Salam, when he comes? <laughs> like I feel like some people are gonna deny his Imam with when like even our own Shias, they might even deny his Imam with after what like, the Sharia Sharia he brings and the things he's gonna say. Some of us might not even realize he's the Imam, <laughs> and we have hadiths that say that some. Some people might even think he's the the jaw, and they won't follow him. So I mean, I think it really comes down to just being unified as a Muslim ummah. As firstly, even before that, being unified as a Shia ummah, because there's so many divisions within us today. I feel like if we all unify on this principle of walayat and love for the Ahlul Bayt and love for the Quran, holding on to these two ropes, which is the Quran and the Ahlul Bayt, alayhi salam. If we can just unify on that and put our differences to the side, we can really be a productive community and get things done and not be at this like standstill which our community is at. Because if you look at our brothers and sisters from the Sunni faith, they're accomplishing a lot of things. Yeah. And us as Shias, we've been oppressed over this time, but now 
with us gaining more freedoms in these Western countries, we need to take advantage of this and spread our truth and show our narrative and show people what being Shia is really about. Because it's not as simple as it looks from the outside. Yeah. Um, and, you know, Brother Hussein, um, you know, just how can we, you know, like we were talking about, um, how important it is, you know, you know, what can we do among our own communities? You know, of course, there's so many different levels. There's a level of, you know, the two sects, you know, the, the Shia and the, you know, the Sunni. There's all these different. What can we do with our own communities, brother? Saying that's, I think, the question here going into the new year. Um, what can we do within our own communities to kind of um, enforce that? We're, you know, we're basically all in this together, you know, basically. I think you can say. Uh, honestly, you know how there's like Sunni Shia, right? As you were saying, your own community, you have to start somewhere, right? First, in your own community, you should try and unify everyone. And honestly, in the new year, uh, there should be a, like a lot more like uh, they should there should be Thursday night and everything at like masjids. That's where everyone can be unified, because what under the roof. In the masjid, uh, that's where you can really be united. So, uh, how you can? Uh, there's a lot of pro there's problems in the world. How to fix all those problems is first we have to fix ourselves in in our within our own community. Because you can talk about other people. I mean, go ahead. You can talk about other people, but it all comes down to how to, how you fix your own self in your own community. Yeah, so, you know, what we can gather, um, I think that, like we said, going into the new year is just working on the little things. I think that, you know, that's what we've come to, um, you know, is that we have to work on the little things. So, like I said, you know, you know the thing I thought of was, you know, being organized, just trying to, you know, keep your house organized so, you know, we can be more productive. Uh, what do you guys think is some little things that we can do going into 2022 that will help us, you know, improve our lives? I think one of the things that we can do is try to gain more knowledge about our religion, mm -hmm. along with bettering our bettering our wajibat, praying on time, etc. That is very important. That is the bare minimum. At the end of the day, praying, fasting, and all of our wajibat, they're the bare minimum of being a Muslim, being a practicing Muslim. That's that's what is required. If you're not praying, if you're not if you're not fasting, or even if you're fasting and you're not fasting properly. Yeah, I think it's gotten to the point where, you know, if somebody reads um, one namaz out of five, it's like, you know. Yeah, you know, and that, that needs to be feeling like a we big man. We need to make it's it's become unnormal. The norm has become to be not religious, and we need to change that 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 normal. We need to make the normal that all of us are praying, we're fasting, and we're reading Quran. Not just oh, we got together in Muharram one year, and that's the only time we come to the masjid. No, we need to we need to unify our communities and grasp our basic principles because those are the tenets of our faith. And along with that, I feel like we all need to try to at least gain some knowledge about a religion. We shouldn't be complete laymen and not know why we believe these certain things. We should be able to question our beliefs. And our Imam alayhi salam allow us to do that. It's not like questioning our beliefs is a bad thing. It only strengthens your belief faith and strengthens your Iman. So I think we should all along with trying to fix our wajibah, praying on time is very important. Along with that, we need to, we should try. It's not something we have to do, but we should try to just gain a little bit of a little bit of knowledge about our religion. So we're not completely like, if you see an atheist or a Christian on the street and you want to explain your religion, we should have enough knowledge to where we can explain to them what we believe in, why we believe these things. Why do we believe in God? Why do we believe in the prophets? Why do we believe in the imams? I feel like if we understand the why behind everything, we can't understand the why behind everything, obviously. But specifically to what we believe, we can really strengthen our faith. Yeah, I like um, 
that's a, a very good point. Um, you know, I also like the idea of, you know, like you're saying, an old fashioned street debate. You just see an atheist on the street, you know, you pull out the facts, you know. Exactly. Um, but yeah, it's, it is just the, the doing the bare minimum. I think that going into 2022, um, I think Brother Hadi, you know, said it right there. I think that start with the very bare minimum. And, um, you know, there's bare minimum. Bare minimum is, you know, you can't stretch that. It's okay. Obviously, you're, there's an Amaz. There's, you know, reading the Quran. This is the bare stuff. Don't eat haram. You know, like, unfortunately, in today, even in today's world, that's a very, you know, even that gets stretched. Yeah, even that gets stretched, unfortunately, to say, um, you know, haram. You know, like, to me, it's like, oh, it's like, you know, like, okay. But to some people, it's not like that. So I think that focusing on the, the easiest things. Just look, we don't have to, you know, you don't have to focus on, you know, you know, whatever else. Just focus on, okay, halal, haram. Just focus on wajib. Just focus on, you know, not backbiting. Just the easy things. Just don't lie. You know, just the basic things that they teach to, you know, young Sunday school students, you know. Just the basic stuff. And this is the stuff because, you know, we act like, you know, like Brother Hadi, you did, uh, you know, it's a good point that we need to learn more. But at the same time, it's like if we don't have our basic beliefs, you know, mm -hmm. intact, if we don't have like, OK, you know, like, for example, listening to music, um, if we don't know that listening to, you know, music is haram, then, you know, that's kind of a problem. Um, and, you know, obviously there's different things people try to twist um, different things, what is and isn't music, but at the same, at the end of the day, um, you know, it's, it's pretty clear, you know, like there's some people like even, um, even in a lot of, uh, well, that's what it is. People try to just twist it, um, is what it is. So I think it's just keeping according to the, the basic things, just staying away from, yeah, haram, staying away from lying, I think this is all we have to do. And really, this is something that, you know, people say every single year, but it's honestly as true as it's possibly can be. Uh, Brother Hussain, uh, what do you suggest? What are some things that you think that we can do? Uh, as Brother Hadi uh, was saying earlier in the show, he was saying uh, about, like, taking it step by step. So, like, uh, when you say uh, taking it step by step, you should try and, like, uh, uh, like, if there's one, like, um, first, you should start, uh, like, uh, doing the basics, reading your namaz, right, reading Quran, fasting, doing all the wajibats. Then, once, like, you already have that basically, right, the basics, like, um, and then staying away from haram, staying away from music, right, then you should try and understand, uh, you should try and understand Islam more. Like, going into the new year, trying to understand Islam. So then, because, I mean, as Brother Adi was saying, if you meet an atheist, what are you going to say? If they ask you, they're asking you questions, what are you going to say? Oh, yeah, we do this because they tell us to. Why is that? They're asking you why, not when, not where, what, not who told you to. They're asking you why. So you should try and understand their religion more in um, inflicting, uh, I mean, Showing in yourself to other people, like um, your qualities, your uh, your faith, right? You're nice. To, you should try and be nice to everyone. So, like, if when people look at you, like the Prophet Muhammad told us, home, he was nice to everyone. So, whenever people looked at him, right, they saw how nice he was, even to his enemies, even to people who hurt him. He would always uh, be kind to them. So. We should try and take it step by step in learning Islam and then trying to understand it better. Yeah, those are, you know, very good points. And I also think that, um, you know, just to throw it in there, that like you were saying about understanding, um, I think we can all agree that, you know, even having um, sort of, you know, backing it up, because like you are saying about, oh, we're told this. So if somebody tells you something, it's not even at the point where, you know, like you guys were mentioning about, um, you know, the debates with the atheists, which is, you know, a very good point. But it's also just 
everyday life. Because like I said, that um, especially, you know, Western civilization, especially the world we live in right now, um, it's the complete, you know, opposite, opposite. of that. So, yeah, complete opposite. So as long as we have our beliefs intact, intact as long as we, um, you know, understand, you know, just the, the basic things, I think that, um, inshallah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will, you know, help us the rest of the way, whatever problems we face. At least we know that, you know, that, you know, the, the all, the all merciful, the all powerful, he's on our side. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think, um, I think that wraps it up pretty well, guys. I think, um, you know, we, we, um, covered a lot of very interesting things. We, you know, cover the steps basically of how to become more productive. Like brother Hadi said, um, you know, one of the small things we can do is just, you know, learning more about our religion. Um, and, you know, Brother Zayn said about, you know, step by step, um, just, you know, the basic thing we do, work on one thing and then get to another. Work on, uh, you know, your wajib and then go from there. Um, and, yeah, that's what it is. And, you know, I said something about organization, which really had nothing to do with, you know, what everybody else was saying, if we're being honest here. But, you know, let's throw it in there. Be organized, kids. Keep your closet, keep your socks and your underwear in a different place, you know. It'll change your lives, okay? Um, just got to throw it in there. Uh, well, that's all the, the time we have left for today. Uh, thank you to our guest, Brother Hadi. This is And uh, Brother Hussein, thank you. Um, so, you know, inshallah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that we're all able to, you know, implement these things into our lives. Um, and inshallah, um, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know, he gives us the tawfiq that, you know, year after year, however long we live, that the time that we have is used in the right way, inshallah. 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 Uh, now we're going to do inshallah, Amma Yujib, for the people in the world starving in need. Allahumma <laughs> 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 Uh, well, that's all the time we've left for today. Thank you for everyone who participated in our program. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.